of the Red Corners to the ring. I started boxing when I was eight years old and me and my two brothers went to the boxing room with my dad and once I started hitting the speed bag, I just fell in love with it. He has always been like dive in to everything, but always wanted to like do things perfectly. And he was a phenomenal athlete. He, I think he won the Craig Halibus Award five out of six years for Norco. We've always felt like keeping our kids busy in sports, keep them out of trouble. It was really cool to, to be able to put in time at something and get better at it and just become, you know, better and better and become the best that I can be. Leading up to the fight, it was a normal fight. It was normal like everything else. I flew in also to support uh, Mr. Daniel Franco. He's a friend and wanted to see him win, step closer to getting a title shot. I don't know what was going on, but uh, something didn't seem right. Um, he was getting hit more than I thought he was, he should be. And when he lost, um, you know, we went up in the ring. You know, I asked him, I said, are you okay? And he kept pointing at his head. And we just had to take him to the ambulance as soon as possible. I know we got him on the stretcher. Everything was just kind of a blur from there. We were in the ambulance, Walter was in the ambulance with us. I asked him, the one of the paramedics, where's the closest trauma center? Because I knew that they were gonna take him to the closest hospital. I remember Daniel losing consciousness and Walter, you know, walking the other EMT through what they needed to do and got him to a trauma center. Finally, when the doctor did all the CT scans on his head, they said he had a brain bleed. They were preparing us for his death, telling us that you know, this, he's not gonna make it. And I just kept holding on to my faith and I asked everybody there, let's pray. God, please spare this guy, please. He'll get through it, he'll get through it. And then, you know, he did. We were really fortunate to have Angel Med flight, bring him back to California. We got to Casa Colina. Everyone here was just so amazing. They just made us feel like, you know, he was their only patient at the time and they got him comfortable and you know, these people care. In regards to traumatic brain injury, Casa Colina has a continuum of care here that is unique and separates it from other rehabilitation institutes. And so we, the whole time we knew he would benefit the most from the Transitional Living Center. While there, he seen neurologist, Dr. Poplazai, seen Dr. Badai, our chief medical officer, and things weren't making sense um, on one day where there was actually a, a TV interview. So I was slurring my words. I was um, repeating words. I, I couldn't really communicate very well. Been uh, going through this whole experience. The, the next day it kind of got a little worse and then I reached out to Dr. Laverso. He saw us in the cafeteria. He had a conversation with Daniel. And then he looks at me, he goes, did you see that? I see it in his pupils. And he just jumped on it right away. He went to radiology. He's like, I need you guys to go to radiology right now. Sent us to radiology. So immediately one of the neurosurgeons looked at the imaging and saw that, you know, that there was gonna be a need for another cranial surgery. His own bone flap was so infected that it was infecting the brain area around there. Within hours, Dr. Rodriguez was able to get him into surgery, cleared out the infection, and uh, brought him back to his room, and he recovered very, very quickly. Daniel's the only fighter that, that we know of that survived, since they've been keeping track of that. That's ever survived to be able to walk and talk. You know, it's, it's, that's amazing. You know, we're definitely lucky he's here today. I think with um, Daniel's recovery, having the therapy that he's had, the amazing people that he's had here, he's had so many different types of therapies, he's had occupational therapy, speech therapy. The group therapy that we did for him was for him to lead a boxing group for three other patients, and he had to teach them certain exercises, and he had to make sure they had to do the right moves. Everything has been, it's been great from my recovery at Casa Colina. 
I'm glad that they brought him here to have him under the best care because if they brought him somewhere else, who knows where he would be right now. You know, Daniel's attitude and his family's support led to the outcome that he has, and I think it's beautiful that he wants to go into healthcare. You know, to me, he's mentioned maybe neuropsychology, he's also mentioned therapy, but nonetheless, I think it's been, you know, a, certainly a life-changing experience. I want to start a foundation for people who get injured during all these sports so that way when they do get to the point where I'm at, we can steer them in the right direction. I always feel that no matter what we do as healthcare professionals, if the will and the constitution's not in the patients, they won't do well. I attribute a lot of his recovery to his own person, being the person that he is, and his family, his girlfriend. They were all very supportive of him. I want to thank Casa Colina from the bottom of my heart for everything they've done for Daddy. I'm here today because of them. Yeah. They saved my life, for sure.